Right, after making some videos about Anrakur the Traveller, including a video that said he's my least favourite model, today we're going to make an Anrakur the Traveller 8th edition Necron list. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k, then please subscribe and hit the bell button and turn on notifications so you don't miss an upload. Now, I was recently contacted by a company called Tranquil Painting. They offered to buy a unit for me and paint it up. Now, I don't own any named characters apart from Imitech the Stormlord, so I suggested to Tranquil Painting that one of those characters would be great. Now, this all happened around the same time that I made my video about my most ugliest Necron models, putting Anraku the Traveller as my least favourite Necron model. A little bit uncanny, however, that doesn't matter because Anraku the Traveller is actually very good on the table and I'm really looking forward to making a list around Anrakur. Now Tranquil Painting didn't ask for a link or a shout out in exchange for this model. They gave it to me out of the goodness of their heart. They like the work that I do here on the channel and they thought it would be pretty cool to have a model that they painted featured in a battle report. Now as you can see they've done a great job of painting the model and I do know that they are in the Idig Beer Wargamers Unification Facebook group. So if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, it's a great group, we've got over a thousand members, then head on over to Facebook and search Idig Beer 40k Wargamers Unification. And as I said, Tranquil Painting are there if you want to contact them. Now, as always when I list build, I always start with one particular unit that I want to play, and then I build the list around that. Anrakur the Traveller is a character that likes to get up close. He's got that 12 inch ability to overtake your enemy's vehicles, and is pretty good in close combat. However, Anrakur the Traveller is very slow across the table, only moving five inches like most of our characters. I think this is maybe one of the big downfalls of the Necron Codex, in particular with the characters, is they're very slow. Now of course we've got the Catacomb Command Barge, but that's with the Overlord only. I think ideally what we need is to be able to put our characters in either a Ghost Ark or in a Catacomb Command Barge. I think that barge should be just a character transport. We could put most of the characters in there. So, getting him across the table was the first thing that I started to look at. Now, we've got some manoeuvrability with our units. Of course, we've got the Deceiver being able to move units across the table. However, once you've done that, you can't assault after that move. And of course, you've got the Veil of Darkness, another way to teleport units. However, Anrakur the Traveller is a named character and already has his artifact. So again, you've got to put points elsewhere to get the Veil to work. And then you're not going to be able to teleport any other unit with Anrakur the Traveller at the same time. And that brings me on to the next thing about this list. Not only do I want Anrakur the Traveller in the list, I also want Praetorians. Now, I haven't played Praetorians yet in 8th edition, and with the chapter approved points reductions, I thought this is a good opportunity to play them. Now, a lot of people are saying that Praetorians are still not worth taking, even with the points reduction. However, I want to try the unit out for myself, and also I want to play some units which I've not played before, just for the fun factor. Now at this moment in time, I've only got five Praetorians built and painted. However, I do have 10 Pariah. Now these old Pariah models, one of my favorite old Necron models, which is no longer a unit in the Codex, make great Praetorians or Lich Guard stand-ins. They're equipped with a war side with a built-in Gauls Blaster, so it seems logical that I go for the Rod of Covenant, because that basically is a melee and shooting weapon, so it's fairly a WYSIWYG. 
Now I'd love to know which weapon you usually use on your Praetorians, so let me know in the comments box below. So knowing that I wanted the Praetorians and the Traveller to work together almost as one unit, I decided trying to get that unit across the table with some form of teleportation was not going to happen. So what I decided to do was walk them up the table. Now of course the Praetorians move faster than Anrakur, so Anrakur is going to have to do some advancing to keep up with the unit. Now at this stage I've now realised that although the list is built around Anrakur the Traveller, Anrakur isn't going to be the linchpin of the army. Not teleporting him up front means he's going to be slower and he's going to be in the game around turn two or three. So he's now a disposable unit. Now this is very powerful when it comes to list building and also playing your army on the table. Necrons! So you've built a list around a particular unit, a unit that you want to play, a unit that you want to have fun with. However, if you make that unit the linchpin of your army, the unit which has to survive, the unit which does all the damage, well, you're setting yourself up straight away for some disappointment. However, if that unit is just disposable, if that unit is there just to have fun with, it frees you up on the table. It means you can be a bit more carefree with the unit, put it into places your opponent isn't expecting. And if it does go down turn one, well you don't get disheartened, you don't get discouraged, and you've built your list around the fact that that unit is disposable. Okay, so now I've spent just over 400 points on a fun, distraction, disposable unit now I need to make the rest of the army work. The first thing is to give Anrakur the Traveller some breathing space to slowly walk across the table. And the only way I can do that is with Canoptic Wraiths. Wraiths are very hard to deal with with their 3 plus invulnerable save, their hive toughness, their multiple wounds and with enough command points being able to reanimate them. The only downside is if you come across an army that can take away your invulnerable save, well they can go down very quickly. And that's why we need a lot of wraiths. So I started the list with three units of six wraiths, the ten Praetorians and Anrakur the Traveller as my HQ, and that would make up an Outrider Novok detachment. Now unlike an assault list which I previously made for a competition where I was only able to take single dynasty, well I'm not restricted to that for this list. Now that list was full on assault. I don't think I want that for this list. I want to try something a bit different. What I want to try is getting a lot of command points. So in this one I'm going to take a battalion. It's always good to try out some new ideas, some new list formats, some new units and some new ways to play the armies. That's how you learn your army and become competent with them. Now one thing that's going to be in the list for sure is two Doomsday Arcs. Now I know I use them in most of my other lists but at the moment I feel I need to have them in the list if I'm up against anything that has multiple wounds, then the Doomsday Arcs are almost essential. Now usually when I play Doomsday Arcs I'll have a Triarch Stalker in the list as well, but I wanted to change direction with that and actually try out the Nahilic Dynasty. Rerolling the ones to hit on the Doomsday Arcs is really useful, and of course I don't need the Triarch Stalker to do it, and that frees up a few points to help me get some troops into the list. I've started the battalion detachment with three units of five Tesla Immortals. I'd love to have units of ten, but of course that really eats up the points. However, five has the advantage when it comes to taking morale checks, assuming, of course, you can keep them alive. In cover, with a two plus save, they're pretty survivable. Assuming you've got other stuff more important to shoot at than five immortals. And yes, those immortals that you just saw are actually old school warriors. However, I think they make great stand-ins 
for Immortals with Tesla. Now this is quite unusual for me, having the battalion and now three HQs needed for the army, had to decide on the second two HQs. So I decided the first HQ would be a cloaked cryptic. I can keep him at the back of the field, babysitting the Doomsday Arcs, helping them with their living metal. So the cryptic's going to be my warlord and he's going to have Time Splinter Cloak. That gives him a five plus after save and lets him re-roll one hit, wound or damage dice. He's basically going to sit at the back, try and survive and help out with the Doomsday Arcs. For my second HQ, I'm going to go for a cheap basic lord. Give him a war sigh. He's going to sit with as many immortals as I can, helping them re-roll ones to wound. Don't you dare. So that is the battalion detachment coming in at around 700 points. Now I've got a good idea of where the list is going, but also I can see where the flaws are. Now the biggest flaw with this list is I don't have any scarabs in there. If you've watched any of my list building videos before, you know that I do like to have scarabs in pretty much all of my lists. They're great for soaking up mortal wounds from smite. They're great for bubble wrapping. They're fast, they can tie up units, and they can take objectives. And as my forward phalanx is going to be all of the wraiths, I don't want those very expensive, very usable wraiths to take mortal wounds from smite. So I'm going to have to get some scarab swarms in the list. Now ideally, I'd like to have my wraith units in units of six, so they're maxed out. However, jiggling around with the points because of the other units that I wanted to take in the army to make it work, meant I had to make a few compromises. So what we're going to do now is go table down and I'm gonna run through the final list that I've made. Okay, so in the end, I managed to get the list to 2000 points exactly, and it gives me nine CPs. So first of all, we've got the Battalion Detachment, the Nihilic Dynasty, we've got the Cryptic with the Cloak, and we've got a Lord with the Warsai. The Cryptic is going to be my Warlord with Time Splinter Cloak. And then we've got three units of Immortals with Tesla, two units of five and one unit of six, just because of the way the points worked out, and then two doomsday arcs. The battalion detachment comes in at 719 points, and then I've got an outrider detachment in the Novok dynasty, and Rakur the Traveller, of course, heading up this detachment with 10 Praetorians with the rod, and then in the fast attack choice, we've got three units of five wraiths, one of the wraiths has a particle caster, again just because of the points, and then two units of five scarabs, and that comes in at 1,281 points. I'm really happy with the list, it looks like a lot of fun to play, it looks as if it could be pretty survivable and do a reasonable amount of damage, and I think without the Praetorians and Anrakur there, the list still has half a chance of doing what it needs to do to win mission objectives. Okay, so there you go. Let me know what you think of that list in the comments box below. Now, of course, I'll be playing this list in a battle report featured on the channel very soon. So if you're not subscribed yet, start now. Hit the Idik Beer icon. And if you want to see my themed Catan list and also battle report, then check out those two videos just there. Beam me up.